Hello and welcome to A Game of Draws. My name's Sarah and I'm going to be showing you how I approach a more painterly art pace. Now I don't want you to think about this being a tutorial because this is a style that I'm very new to. Um, I'm not trained, I didn't go to art school or anything like that. So this is completely self-taught and it's something that I'm just experimenting with and probably in a week's time I'll see everything that's wrong with it and I'll want to completely redo it but this is really just something that I'm playing around with um, so hopefully it can kind of give you ideas and give you a little bit of direction so the first thing that I do with every single art piece I do no matter what the style is I spend a long time doing the construction lines this is something that's really important to me I think that you should always plan a piece I mean, not always, because art's so subjective, but a lot of the time you should really plan an art piece and make sure that you've got the composition right and that you feel like you've made each of the different pieces in the artwork really blend together nicely and sit nicely on the page and get rid of all the anatomical issues. I mean, really what I should have done is I should have flipped the image back and forth a few times to check that everything worked but I kind of just wanted to get stuck in. Um, next what I do is I um, I turn the sketch layer into a multiply layer, put it right to the top and then start laying down my main colours. Now most of the colours that I'm working on I tend to make a little palette in the top left or the top right of the page and that's what I'll pick from. Now. You can colour pick from whatever the references that you're using or from other references or previous artwork you've done, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm personally just trying to teach myself how to come up with colour palettes, that's something I'm trying to work on myself, so that's why I've done it this way. Something that I recently learnt and that I'm trying to work on is the idea of having yellow tones towards the top of the image, redder tones in the middle, this is for faces by the way, redder tones for the middle and the fleshy parts like the nose and the cheeks and then more greeny hues around the bottom of the chin, around the neck and around the eyes. So you'll see that that's kind of the pattern that I'm going for in this piece. Um, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm trying to work out where all the different um, both hues and values are. So I'm thinking about what parts of the page kind of pop and what parts recede. So I kind of put these purpley darker tones around the eye and around that kind of dipped area. And then I'm putting some brighter tones on the brow bone, around the lips, um, on the top of the cheeks and on the nose. Try and pull them out towards the viewer. One of my favourite bits I did in this piece actually was the lips, which I'm working on at the moment. Um, the reason for that being was I was using some theory that I've learned through makeup, which is the idea that you have a white line or a white-ish line around the edge of the top of the lip, around the cupid bow, that kind of area. And the reason for that is that it really pops that top lip, and I noticed that a similar thing had been done in the reference photo, so I tried to recreate that. And then what I'm trying to do is um, trying to get rid of those initial lines that I had. So you'll see me erasing the lines and then putting in new ones. The new lines being um, the actual colour of the piece that I want it to be. So I'm using these ready colours around the nose, I'm using these purpley colours in more of the shadowed areas and then I'm going into places that are darker like the ears and using these deep, um, these deep berry colours that I've used in the lips. Something that uh, you might have noticed is that I tend to use coloured lines. Now that, that isn't something that I've always done. I used to work in with black lines a lot and that's because my background is in comics and manga. But the reason why I'm using these coloured tones, and I'm using the uh, coloured hues even, and the reason why I'm using them even on this black eyeliner and stuff like that, is because I think it, personally, I feel like it really makes the lines blend into the image, and it's something that I'm trying to teach myself to do, to try and make it not, make it look like there's more of a form rather than a line. Um, and that's something that I'm certainly not used to do, and I've only, I've only recently kind of understood what that meant. 
because um, it's not something that I properly studied in school. We were told that, that there was a foreman line. We weren't really told what that was though, so it's definitely something that I'm kind of self-teaching um, myself at the moment. Now that I've gotten in these darker times, I'm kind of going around the image, the image and looking for any areas where I feel like I need those darker, darker values again. So around the edges of the eyes, um, the lines where the mouth meets, like the, the lips meet, and around the teeth, um, underneath the eyes, um, the shadow of where the eyelashes, the cast shadow from the eyelashes, um, that's something you'll see in a lot of like um, 1950s photography and stuff like that, or anything kind of Marilyn Monroe-esque, that kind of thing, you'll see that put in. wondering, I'm using um, Manx Studio, um, and for those of you who have Manx Studio, you're probably thinking, but where on earth have all these brush brushes come from, because Manx Studio has like no brushes. Um, they're actually all Red Juices brushes, and they're basically the only brushes that I use in Manx Studio now, I don't use any of the defaults. So, the one that I'm using for basically all of the image at the moment is the flat brush. Um, and I'm using it at kind of a quite like a medium opacity so that it can blend well. And then I'm going in with tools like the pencil R1 and just doing little highlights here and there, um, putting in the eyelashes, anything that needs a bit more fine detail. Now if you look at the image, you can see that she's got some little marks on her skin. Um, and I think it's really important to put these kinds of marks onto skin, no matter who you're drawing, because it makes it look so much more alive and realistic. So what I've done is I've created, I think it's a multiply layer, um, and I've just done a light brown little splodges here and there, and I'm not doing circles. Whatever you do, don't do circles. Um, gone back in and I think I've used um, a multiply layer and I'm trying to get kind of an interesting hue across the image. So I've got this kind of like really yellow hues on the right hand side of the image and then the left hand side is this more purpley tone. Um, I'm trying to use a technique that I saw in a recent documentary. If I can find the documentary I'll put it in the uh, comments because it was actually really Description, do you do? <laughs> um, because it was actually really useful. And the idea is this if you're in a room with normal daylight and a coloured light hits your character, i.e., this kind of purpley colour, then the shadow, rather than it being grey, and you might assume that it's grey at first, and if you zoomed in on it, it would be grey. You would colour pick it and it would be grey. But your eye kind of looks at the context and tells you that it's actually the opposite colour on colour. So this kind of really bluey hue, um, really bluey yellowy hue, depending on where you pick in the purple spectrum. So because of that, that's really, I think, 
sell me a lot further in learning this style. Um, I struggle a lot with kind of more realistic styles digitally. I'm better at it traditionally. Um, and I think learning that straight up commentary has just made me jump in so much faster than I have previously. Oh, I'll just explain what I'm doing here. So, I noticed the shape of the face wasn't exactly what I wanted. I'm a lot better at capturing likeness traditionally because I'm so used to it because I draw people constantly at conventions. Um, traditional, uh, digital even, I find that there's a weird disconnect between me and the tablet because I'm not working with a screen tablet, I'm working with um, looking at my computer screen and drawing on my tablet. I don't get it as accurate as what I'd like so that I take the piece into Photoshop and I use the warp tool to basically slightly maneuver all of the objects that I have in the image and get it closer to what I actually want. Then I bring it back into Man Studio, use the same uh, brushes I was using before to blend that area and make it, make it so that you can't see that I did that. Um, and then something that I like to do is go over the whole image with kind of like a faded um, color view. So I, I like to make it look like kind of got the spotlight in the middle of the image and then everything else blends out. So that's kind of cool. um, just with like a watercolor type brush. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sketch for key experimental type video again with like a narration of thoughts over the top. Just let me know and I'll do more of them because I'm always playing around. Um, don't forget I've got videos every Wednesday and then I stream every Monday 8pm GMT on Picato and then 5.30pm PT um, for the Artist Lounge podcast and uh, the Artist Lounge podcast posts to my YouTube channel live and after it's finished so just subscribe and you'll get more of that so I hope you enjoyed the show and I'll see you next week